नमस्ते वी विल नाउ सी द वेरिएशन ऑफ द अवतारस द दशावतारस आर द मोस्ट कॉमनली नोन इनकारनेशन ऑफ लॉर्ड विष्णु वी ऑल्सो सी द इंक्लूशन ऑफ बुद्धा इन द लिस्ट समटाइम्स अपार्ट फ्रॉम बुद्धा भागवत पुराणा इंक्लूड्स हंस सत्वत यज्ञ दत्तात्रेय कपिल हयग्रीव धन्वंतरी वेदव्यास एट्सेट्रा एस अवतारस ऑफ महाविष्णु ईच ऑफ देम प्लेड ए सिग्निफिकेंट रोल इन द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ हिंदुइजम एंड its ancillary branches of knowledge incarnations of brahma and shiva amongst the trimurtis namely brahma vishnu and shiva lord vishnu is responsible for the preservation and continuation of the worlds and beings which at times requires his direct intervention and necessary corrective action hence we have the avatars of mahavishnu both brahma and shiva are credited with many manifestations but they are not considered avatars or incarnations shaktis incarnations an incarnation is an exception rather than the rule according to the scriptures although ishwara is the essential cause of creation he does not directly participate in it he remains in the background as the enjoyer and a passive witness the only exception to this is when he incarnates upon earth as an incarnation he becomes an active player in the drama even then he still requires the active participation of his shaktis hence each incarnation of lord vishnu is supported by a concurrent incarnation of goddess lakshmi she is the goddess of opulence and abundance and the source of his strength and dynamism the significance of avatara in human life although ishwara is impartial indifferent and without attachments he is not a mere passive witness but an active and dynamic force who keeps a firm hold upon his creation as the lord and controller of the universe he promptly responds to the situations which undermine the order and regularity of the world an incarnation of ishwara exemplifies the importance of obligatory duties and the need for karma yoga or the yoga of selfless action although ishwara has no purpose or desire he still engages in actions and if necessary incarnates upon earth to restore order an incarnation of ishwara also points to the need to remain on guard in the mortal world and stay free from evil we cannot live irresponsibly or let the evil increase in our minds and bodies we have to vigorously fight to keep ourselves pure and serve ishwara and his devotees by doing our part in preserving the order and regularity of the world and upholding dharma an incarnation gives us the hope 
that we are not alone in the world and we will not be deserted by Ishwara at any time. He is our Lord and Protector who keeps a watch over us. In dire situations, He manifests in our lives in various guises to help and protect us from adversity, evil and chaos. Just as there are incarnations of the cosmic being, there can be incarnations of Ishwara within the microcosm of a living entity. At times, Ishwara may descend directly into our dreams or our consciousness to deliver a message, cleanse our minds and bodies, bestow His grace or grant liberation. An incarnation serves as a role model for the humans. Through this life and deeds, he exemplifies virtues such as purity, non-violence, detachment, truthfulness, non-covetousness, self-control, austerity, humility, and so on, and suggests how humans should live upon earth, uphold dharma, cultivate divine qualities, and regulate their lives with righteous conduct. Namaste.